morning. <clears throat> As a TEDx youth organizer, my role is to establish a platform for students to share their ideas worth spreading. It's usually a role that's behind the scenes. So much so that I found comfort in the shadows of the wings of the theater that I do on the actual red carpet itself, or in this case, the bright fuchsia pink of Learning 2. <laughs> <clears throat> so when I was asked to deliver this talk, I was mortified, like many of you would have been. Um, but I also found myself in that uncomfortable predicament of talking the talk, but not necessarily walking the walk. And how often do we do that as educators? We ask our students to volunteer, yet we don't necessarily volunteer ourselves. We ask our students to reflect, but we may not reflect on our own practices. We ask our students to give a talk in front of their peers, but we won't necessarily do it ourselves. So I thought it behooved me, not behoova me, which is my new app I'm working on, <laughs> to give this talk, number one, and number two, to gain empathy for the work that my students were doing by delivering this talk. So I thought, okay, so what are all the things that I ask my students to do? Well, they should provide a couple examples of case studies or vignettes of stories that they're familiar with that gets to their main idea. I need to showcase some inspirational image like this that makes us think about perspective in a new way. I had to pace around the stage like this, and when I came to my thesis statement, I came my hands together like this. Those are all the tricks, but what I realized when I was actually rehearsing was I wasn't telling my story, and that's exactly what TEDx talks are about, and that's what I'm going to do now. So, my story is this. About four years ago, I worked at Bonn International School, and I met a woman named Tosca, and she was a primary teacher, and she was a licensee of our TEDx event at that point. Because she worked with younger kids, she didn't have access to older kids in the way that I did as a high school English teacher. So I got on board, and uh, we collaborated, and I became a speaker coach for the students. And what happened was magical. I taught discrete English skills in my classroom, but it wasn't the same as a, a club like this. Students were researching, outlining, drafting, revising, delivering talks that, cared, that they cared about. Students were working cross-divisionally, younger students giving ideas to older students, older students helping guide younger students in their ideas. But perhaps most profoundly what happened was after the videos were out in the world. <clears throat> students like Analia Wu, a grade 11 student that gave a talk about the power of failure, had 2,000 hits after one week of her talk being out. Not only that, a professional nurse in, the, in another country far away from where she was messaged her and said, thank you, I've been feeling like a failure in my own life and you've given me the courage to not be a failure. Students like Gabby Shimako gave a talk on feminism and the mother emailed her and said, listen, I've shown your video to my kids because I want my kids to know that they should not be afraid to be called feminists. Students like Georgi and Liam who gave their talk about the power of cross-divisional collaboration, a fifth grade student and a 12th grade student. They shared their ideas, it was so powerful, our head of school at the Anglo-American School of Sophia asked them to deliver the keynote at CISA, which I know a few of you got to see a few weeks ago. This is what happens when we get off the red carpet. Students pluck at our heartstrings, they affect change, they challenge the way we think. So I ask you, I implore you, to join me in the wings of the theater every now and then and leave the red carpet for our students. Thank you. <laughs>